cells. Um, this is lesson three of human reproduction, and it's the lesson for Thursday, the 7th of May. Okay, right. Let's go. Okay, so this we we finished with the structure of the female reproductive organs yesterday, and I hope that you all understood it and everything was clear to you, as I hope the previous lessons have been. So today we're going to look at oogenesis or oogenesis. It doesn't matter as long as you can write it. I don't care how you say it. Just be able to spell it. Okay. Now, again, the government schools, the CAPS document stipulates that they need to know all the details of this particular process, just like they have to know all the details of spermatogenesis. You don't have to know it. The CAPS document, the SAGS document for the IEB says you don't have to know that detail. So I will go through and explain the whole thing. And I will tell you what you need to know. Okay, so going. All right. So if one looks at, at a section through an ovary, and this is obviously a longitudinal section because it's cut through the long axis of the ovary and not through the short axis of the ovary. Okay. Now this diagram shows you a whole lot of processes that occurring are occurring here. Those processes are never all occurring at the same time. So this is a sequence of events that happens in a monthly cycle, with a monthly cycle being approximately 28 days in an average human female. So, but I'll talk about that in more detail later on. Okay, so just like with the testes, the seminiferous tubules, there is a layer of cells around the outside that is diploid, and that is the germinal or germline epithelium. Don't call it germline, I'm happy with you calling it germinal epithelium. So those cells are diploid. And the cells of that layer are able to divide by mitosis. And some of the cells thus formed become surrounded by a layer of cells and they form a little follicle. So what is a follicle? A follicle is a cell in the center that is going to become the egg cell, surrounded by a layer of cells. So that is a follicle. And this is the very first stages of follicles. Here are called primordial follicles. You don't have to know that. You can just call them primary follicles. I'm, I'm fine with that. And what happens is this little cell in the center here is the one that is going to divide in time by meiosis and form four cells. Okay, so this then shows you this, the monthly sequence of events. In fact, let's go to the simple one. Okay, I'm going to deal with it very simplistically first of all, and then I'm gonna go back and do it in slightly more detail. But remember, you don't have to know as much detail as the government cells, schools do. Okay, right, so. Primary follicle equals the cell in the middle that is going to divide by meiosis and some, layer, some layers of cells around the outside. This every single month in a human female, one of those primary follicles starts to mature. And we'll talk about how many there are, when they're produced, etc. But at the moment, you've just got to know the basic processes. So one of the primary follicles will start to mature. It undergoes meiosis one. It's a very uneven division. One of the cells is tiny and is called a polar body. And the other daughter cell is the one that's eventually going to become the egg cell. So it's uneven, the first division. The follicle 
grows and grows and grows and accumulates liquid. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it becomes what is called a mature graphene follicle. So a graphene follicle has some layers of cells around the outside, some follicular cells, a whole lot of liquid. And this little cell that was formed as a result of meiosis one. The second cell, the polar body, in essence, just disintegrates over time, but we'll talk about that in more detail later on. At this point, the egg cell is ready to be fertilized. And so this graphene follicle rises to the surface of the ovary and pushes against the wall and bursts open and it releases this secondary oocyte. This still needs to undergo the second phase of meiosis, but you don't have to obsess about that. We'll talk about that in more detail later on. But I'm 100% fine with you calling this an egg cell and with you presuming that it is already um, mature and ready to be fertilized. We'll talk about that. Okay. The remnants of that follicle um, swell and become yellow in color and they are called the corpus luteum and that means yellow body or body yellow in fact looks like a little cloud and the corpus luteum is terribly terribly important because it secretes in hormones and we'll talk about that later on and those hormones are essential in maintaining pregnancy. If this little thing becomes fertilized, the corpus luteum will carry on. It will um, remain there and carry on secreting those hormones for about the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, but we'll talk about that. If the little egg cell doesn't become fertilized, then the corpus luteum disintegrates. You see here it becomes called the corpus albicans. You don't have to know that. And then that's the end of the month and the female menstruates and she's not pregnant. And the following month, the whole process starts again. One of the primary follicles will mature and become a secondary follicle, which will grow and become a graphene follicle, which then rises to the surface of the ovary and bursts open, releasing a little egg Accurately speaking, a secondary oocyte, it's not yet a little egg, but I'm fine with you calling it an egg cell. The remains of the follicle become, um, they grow and they become the corpus luteum, the yellow body, and that corpus luteum, remember, secretes hormones. If the female doesn't fall pregnant, then within a few days, that corpus luteum starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller and disintegrates and the whole cycle starts again. So what you need to realize is that these processes, although they all being shown in the same diagram, are not actually happening at the same time. You would never find an ovary that has all of these things going on at the same time. They would always be primary follicles but there wouldn't be um, a graphene follicle and a corpus luteum at the same time. All right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the cell in the follicle divides over time, and we'll talk about that, to form the four cells that are the result of meiosis. Okay, this just shows you exactly the same thing, but here it just shows you that a way around, not that a way around, like in the previous diagram. So primary follicles, a primordial follicle will mature one per month into a primary follicle. That primary follicle, this little cell in the middle here, starts to divide by meiosis and the follicle grows and it absorbs liquid and becomes a secondary follicle. And eventually it is huge and it is called a graphene follicle. And inside here is a little oocyte. We're going to call it an egg cell. It is haploid. It is in. If this is a human, then it's 23 chromosomes. Graphene follicle pushes to the surface and it bursts open and it releases the little egg cell 
which is surrounded by some layers of follicular cells. Okay, that process of releasing the egg cell is called ovulation. And the ruptured follicle, the remains of the follicle then develop into the corpus luteum, which over time degenerates if the female doesn't fall pregnant, and the process starts again. So remember, no ovary will show all these things at one time. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the actual division of that single cell that is inside a primary follicle. So it divides phimosis one. That division is uneven. It forms one large cell and one small polar body. At meiosis two, the division of the large cell is again uneven. And so there's one large cell and one smaller bo polar body here. And then this original polar body also divides. And so the result of oogenesis is one egg cell or ovum and three polar bodies. Currently, it appears that the polar bodies play no role in reproduction. Okay, so this is urogenesis. You don't have to know the names of the stages, just like you didn't have to know it in spermatogenesis. So here is a diploid cell in a, a, it's a primary oocyte in the primary follicle, and it undergoes meiosis one, and it's an uneven division, small polar body and a secondary oocyte, but you don't have to know that name. You don't even have to know this name. So you just know that there's a diploid cell which divides by meiosis one and forms one large cell and one small cell. Know that this cell is called a polar body. We don't care about you knowing about that one. And then meiosis two happens. So this polar body splits into two polar bodies. Okay, haploid. These ones were haploid, and this cell splits into one large cell and another polar body. So here we've got three polar bodies and one cell that matures into an egg cell or an ovum. This is what you have to know. You have to understand, just as you did with spermatogenesis, how these stages tie in with the stages that you're supposed to know about meiosis but don't learn the names, okay? All right. So the follicle grows and grows and grows, and when it's mature, it's large. In fact, it's um, almost a centimeter in diameter. It contains a lot of fluid, and it's called a graphium follicle, and that's capital G because it's named after someone. Okay, now this you don't have to know. However, when you go back to that original um, drawing of the ovary that I showed you, um, I said that when ovulation occurs, it's a secondary oocyte that is released. Don't obsess about this. If you know and understand it, I'm fine with that, but don't go and learn that. We at the IEB are 100% happy with you just saying that this is an egg cell. But in reality, what is released from the graphene follicle is a cell which still hasn't undergone meiosis II. Um, and only if it fuses with a sperm cell does it undergo meiosis II. But you don't have to worry about that, just call it an egg cell, okay? I'm just worried about you looking at other diagrams and seeing that it's called a secondary oocyte, and that's just very confusing. Okay, so for interest sake, every woman, is born with all her primary follicles already inside her ovaries. So when a female is in her mother's uterus as a fetus, she already has all the little primary follicles ready in her ovaries. Um, a lot of the sources talk about it being the eggs, but it's not actually the eggs, it's the primary follicle. And she can have as many as 7 million of these things in her two ovaries at the time when she's born. And these will be released one by one with 
each what is called ovarian cycle, and that's that cycle that happens um, within an ovary throughout your fertile lifetime. And it seems like a huge waste because, in fact, if you consider that a woman, let's say, on average is, is fertile for um, 40 years of her life and she has 12 ovarian cycles per year, one per month, in other words. So that's, on average, a woman has 480 ovarian cycles. That means that on average, a female only releases 480 eggs in her lifetime. So why have 7 million? In fact, as she ages, and I'm not talking even like age 60 or something, uh, as she ages and even reaches puberty, a whole lot of these have disintegrated. So by the time she reaches puberty, and as she goes through her, her fertile time of her life, in fact, many of them um, just disintegrate. And in addition to disintegrating, they actually become um, more and more, um, well, less and less perfect. So, an egg that is released at, say, age 45 is quite often not a perfect egg cell. Because remember that a female has more and more chance the older she gets of having um, non-disjunction having occurred and therefore birth defects occurring in the offspring. So to think about, because a female is born with all her primary follicles, this actually means that her eggs or primary follicles were once inside, in fact, her mother. Because when the woman was carried as a fetus in utero, in other words, in her mother's um, uterus, then she, that, that woman in her ovaries had all these primary egg follicles or primordial follicles. So that means that a mother carried the egg cells, which might one day be fertilized and grow into her own grandchild, which is quite interesting. Ah, anyway, moving on. Okay, cross-section through an ovary. That's a micrograph, and it's showing various stages of development, and you can see that these are little primary follicles. This is a follicle which is busy maturing, and this then on the right side is a graphene follicle, or almost a graphene follicle because it contains a lot of liquid. And this is the little haploid cell that is going to be ovulated. Maybe you're going to just call it an egg cell. Okay, right. So now that we've gone through this, let's go through this again and have a look at it. So this then um, would be, let's start here. So primary follicles or primordial follicles, Okay, you can see them in detail up here. Um, stimulated by a hormone that we're going to talk about later on. One per cycle develops into a primary follicle. There's a primary follicle. And this cell undergoes meiosis one, and the follicle absorbs a whole lot of liquid, and it gets bigger and bigger and becomes a secondary follicle. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and becomes a graphene follicle. You, remember, just call this thing an egg cell, okay? And the graphene follicle is big, and it pushes to the surface of the ovary, and it pushes against the germinal epithelium, and it ruptures, and it releases the egg cell or ovum. And that process of releasing the ovum is called ovulation. The remains or the remnants of the, core of the graphene follicle become the corpus luteum, which in fact grows initially, and is called the uh, corpus luteum, or yellow body, you're going to call it the corpus luteum. Um, and remember that the corpus luteum secretes hormones. We're going to talk about those in more detail later on. It's terribly important. These are the hormones that prevent a female having a miscarriage um, if she falls pregnant. If she doesn't fall pregnant, then after a few days, the corpus luteum starts to disintegrate 
and there's no longer a corpus luteum and therefore the whole cycle starts again. Okay, that's right. Lots of connective tissue, lots of um, blood vessels. Okay, so work for you to do. Questions one and two of activity 4.7, page 73 of your textbook. Um, and although it doesn't tell you to do this, I would like you to do question two in the form of a table of comparison. Um, I've told my class this before, and I'm sure that Mrs. Florenza has told her class. Um, in the question that I marked, but not the question that Mrs. Florenza marked, in the matric exam last year, she marked a different question. Um, one of the questions was a table of comparison. And the students did so appallingly badly in this table. Um, and quite often what happens is if, a, if students do badly, consistently do badly in a particular question in the matric exam one year, then the following year, the examiner will ask the same type of question. Now, it's not on the same work, because remember, um, the, the four sections within the matric syllabus rotate around the, the two exam papers. And this was a, a question in paper two. And last year, paper two was on evolution. This year, it's on um, the reproduction, plant, animal, um, et cetera, et cetera, human. Um, and the endocrine system. And so it's not going to be on the same section, but I would not be surprised if the examiner did not ask again a table of comparison. And it's terribly important that you practice doing that. So in a test or exam, marks would be allocated for your table design. And this was what was so bad last year, was the actual design of the table. The students really did appalling work. Sure, marking it was a nightmare. Okay, so do that. Okay. Ovulation. Ovulation is the process that occurs when a graphene follicle moves to the surface of the ovary. It actually causes a visible bump on the surface of the ovary, and I'll show you pictures of that now. now. And then the graphene follicle bursts and it releases the egg cell or the ovum, which in fact is not quite yet in the egg cell or in the ovum, but you call it that. The ovum is a cell that has already begun meiosis too, and it's surrounded by several layers of follicle cells or follicular cells. In other words, cells that came out of the follicle with it. An ovum is released from an alternate ovary every four weeks, approximately, in a human. And only if it is fertilized does it complete meiosis too. Okay, so if the right ovary releases an ovum one month, then in theory, the following month, the left ovary should be able to release an ovum. Okay, right. So the ovum is pulled into the fallopian tube by means of the current caused by those fimbriae. And fimbriae is a um, Latin word meaning fringe. So remember that they fill with blood and they waft when ovulation occurs. They don't normally otherwise. And they cause a suction which draws that ovum into the fallopian tube. Once the ovum has been released, um, the cells lining the ruptured follicle multiply and form the yellow mass called the corpus luteum. If fertilization doesn't occur, the corpus luteum degenerates and disappears, as does the ovum disintegrate. If fertilization does occur, the corpus luteum enlarges and produces um, a hormone, in fact, large quantities of progesterone and a little bit of a second hormone, estrogen, but we'll talk about that later on, with several important functions concerned with pregnancy. Okay. Right. I'm not...
not going to carry on today because this particular section needs to be done in one lesson with you focusing really, really diligently on it. So the homework that I'm going to set you today, other than, oh, no, I've written it wrong. No, I haven't. Questions one and two of activity 47 on page 73. I'm going to say to you, learn everything that we've done so far. Now, you need to, for your portfolios, do another two tests and case study. So I'm, I have asked that of those two tests, your first one is a test on human reproduction and possibly some um, population studies and that it happens very soon after you get back to school. Okay, so you need to learn the population studies work and you need to learn this human reproduction work um, and be prepared for a test very soon. 